Captain's the Spirit be upon us, giving us revelation, understanding. Teach us, we pray. Help us see our great God, our God who, who excels and um, enjoys even things he does in weakness, what the world calls weakness. That's where your strength is, Lord, displayed. I pray today that you would bless our ears, our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. All of us said, Amen. All right. The vulnerable God. The vulnerable God. Let's look at this text in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Scripture says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, Mm -hmm. and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Notice this is Jesus, right? Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And we talk about the vulnerable God, which means basically the defenseless, a God who sends a child unprotected. He sends the king unprotected exposed, open, and God chooses to do that. You ever wondered about God's ways, the way he does what he does? You know, um, his ways, his thoughts, he couldn't have done it any other way. I mean, any rescue mission, and we watch some movies, and I like watching some movies, Um, especially comedies, I love that, but sometimes I, because I'm can't find anything else. I see sometimes those rescue missions. Um, any rescue mission is in, host, in hostile environments. The authorities usually send trained men, trained muscled men like Van Damme. You know that guy. As soon as I see his name, I'm not going to watch this today. Or Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know that I call him Nike because that's what I think of him. Or some some dude like that. You you would have this, you know, really. I wondered how they couldn't get Osama bin Laden. You know, with all this going on, they could have got that guy. It took him took them 10 years finally to get him. 007, you know. But you know, when our God wanted to rescue the whole world from an evil force from the clutches of Satan, who does he send? He sends a child. He sends a boy. You know, God's ways are not our ways. Yet, of course, as we've been sharing the last few weeks, that this is no ordinary boy. He is the Lord God that, that existed even before the world was created. But yet, this God had become a man. And in order to become man, God didn't send a full-blown man. He sent a child. Now, I would think that's a very vulnerable God. That he would, he would attempt to do such a thing. It, it is almost like saying, like, of your child, of, and saying to your child, look, I'd like you to cross this busy freeway and get on the other side, buy some milk and come. Hmm? You would never do that. You'd never send your child. Not across the busy freeway. Here's God now. This is the Lord. He is, he has gone out of his way and his plans are very different and he sends the boy, he sends a child. Now, the thing about this is that he could have died prematurely. That would have been a problem. If they killed him at two years old, that would have been a, a problem. Because God's plan was that he would die on a cruel cross for our sake. 
Oh, oh, not only he could have died prematurely, he could have sinned. You might think, well, he couldn't sin, he's God. No, he's, he's God, yes, but he's also man. He's the God man. Fully God, fully man. Scripture says he was tempted in every point, but did not sin. Why would the devil tempt him? And remember the whole story of the temptation after the wilderness. Why would he be tempted if he couldn't sin? The ability to sin was there. He could have sinned. He didn't sin. I imagine, if you will, this vulnerable God sending a son, a child, into the world. And if he sinned, God forbid, thankfully he didn't. If he sinned, that would be our last opportunity to be saved. That was the only and the last opportunity. That's how vulnerable this is. And that, the, you know, Adam, Adam sinned like poof, like that, right in the middle of, of innocence. You think, well, where's sin? Well, sin was, sin was born over there. Any disobedience, anything that has to do with the law of God and of disobedience to the law of God is sin. And here in the garden, which is a garden of bliss, Innocence, he sinned. Yeah, it was evil. I mean, there was ample opportunity for him to sin. And the enemy tried throughout his entire life to drop him. Wanted to make him a king prematurely. Just as he did with Adam. You know, he, God told him not to eat of, the, any, of all the trees. He can eat of every other tree but the one. Don't eat of it. And that's the tree the enemy took fruit of and said, eat. And he did. That Adam. Adam and his wife. And plant the whole human race into sin. Now, everybody that's going to be in Christ would continually be in sin had he sinned. It didn't happen. Fortunately, it didn't happen. So my point, what is my point this morning? My point this morning is that God wants to show his power in weakness. And we, all of us, are weak people. Yes. Yeah. He can take something small. You might think yourself in, insignificant. But he can take something little, something insignificant, to accomplish anything he desires. If he can do that with his son, he can do almost anything with you and me. Mm -hmm. You know? God is that good. God is that smart. And God is that powerful. You and I are not that powerful. But God in us, we're able to conquer almost anything. We can say no to the devil. Because we can do all things through Christ. Yeah. We can say no. We don't have to succumb to anything the enemy does. You know, I was a drug addict at one stage. But when I came to the Lord, I had to say, that's it. No. That's the end of the enemy ruling my body. He has had my body for all this time. I am not going to give him my body anymore. I'm going to now give my body to God. I was 19. So I, I believe God is able to, to show his power in weakness. When you're really down, you don't have the, even the strength to do it. God will show up at that point. It's amazing, isn't he? And so he could take anything. He's a vulnerable God. You know, angels were in attendance 24-7. They were there. Jesus at one point, you remember in, in the garden, or oh, somebody was saying something, oh, Pilate. And he was saying, you know, I, do you know I can rescue you from, your, from this, this thing? You're going to die. All, that, the, all temptations, by the way. Just tell me who you are, what's the story, and I'll save you. My wife even warned me about what's happened. He didn't give up. Do you, know, you know that I could call upon legions of, of angels right now, and they'd come to my rescue. I don't, really don't need your help. Do you know you and I, we are joint heirs with Christ, and we don't have to succumb to anything in this world. Nothing is too... Strong for our God. 
He knows our weakness. He knows that we are without strength. He knows our frame. He knows everything about us, but we don't have to succumb to anything the enemy throws at us. Do you know? You can stand. So he sends us. He sends us, as he said, his son, the little babe in the manger. He sends us. He sends us to, we are, as I said, in the main, weak. Weak people. Lowly and without much understanding. Yet God is able to take us and make his plan uh, his plan work through our lives. So his plan is to use us and to confuse the mighty. Look at this text in First, in, in, in first Corinthians 1. He says in verse 27, But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. It doesn't mean that you're foolish. In one sense you are. You and I are. But what it means is that you don't know much. But there are people that claim to know much. They might have a string of degrees. And they are still confused people. Right? So he chose us, the foolish ones, who are foolish enough to believe the preaching of the gospel. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. I mean, we are shining testimonies of that. And look at your life. Look at what happened to you. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Yeah, but he wants the glory for himself. He wants to take something that's absolutely nothing. People that have rejected, now I felt like now I've been rejected in my life. Nobody thought of me as anything that I would amount to anything. But then the Lord comes. Hmm? takes me, changes my life, and then shows me off. Isn't that amazing? I love your enthusiasm. You're excited people. So if, you, if we ever desire to be, to be used of God, remember he uses, he chooses to use those who are humble before him. Those that humble themselves, they will be exalted. You know, the world pushes their weight around, you know. And those that are like, like, you know, excited people, they are the ones chosen to be like, you know, in top places where yeah, he could use his authority. He speaks. This word. But it's for, for God, it's the opposite. He uses the ones that are humble of heart. Humble of heart. And you can change and confuse the mighty. His ways are very different. Have you ever considered David and Goliath? Remember, this Goliath fellow was a couple of size, one and a half times David's size, I would think, and big and tall. And then he says to David, when David comes to him with a sling and a stone, and then he shouts at him, barks at David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks in First Samuel 17? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. Doesn't say what curse words he used. Come here, he said, I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. But David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword. I don't think it sounds like it, but it was close to that. You come against, <laughs> you come against me with this, like his voice is not even broken yet, right? You come, with this, look at the audacity of this guy. This is what I'm saying. We have a mouth. We have a heart. We just, our strength don't match up with that, but, but still we have a strength second to none in the whole world. What you and I can accomplish just by coming in the name of the Lord and going to God in prayer, what we can accomplish just in prayer, presidents and kings would love to know your secret. Because our prayers and our ministry before the Lord moves mountains, changes history. That's what we can do. Ah, no, people on the side are having a problem. What about you guys? And uh, David says, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. 
the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. And then this is what he says to him. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me, you, you're coming down, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Look at the audacity this guy got. Today, I will give you, give the carcasses of the Philistine army. You're not only going for him, this is the whole lot of you. Today, one thing. I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. See, God sends a boy, the vulnerable boy. He says, go, Ja, Hamba. Go in my name. Just go. Stand there. We're weak people. We got like this, we got the sling and a stone. But I tell you, the power that is in us, when we go on our knees, hmm, the enemy shakes because we come in the name of the Lord. Such is your power. You got to use it, right? You got to use it. If that little boy, David, didn't stand there that day and speak and fight in that way, David, Goliath would not have come down. Would not. No, we must not be afraid. We must never be afraid. You know, being vulnerable has to do with being defenseless. No defense, unprotected, you're weak, you're feeling insecure, you're feeling, the, you know, everything is open, everything is exposed. There you are, you don't know what to do, what to say. And some, some of you, God might want you to speak, you know, maybe speak publicly, maybe witness, talk to people about the Lord or something like that. And you and I are terrified to even begin that process because we don't want to talk. We want to keep quiet. Why be afraid with the power that you and I have? So the world, of course, can never understand God's way. That's why the plan of salvation is, is veiled to those people. Humility is a God thing. God, the world doesn't look for humility. It just looks for people that look strong and that can speak like, you know, like a bull. They think that that will get things done. They don't know God's way. The way of the world is ex to exalt yourself and to look out for number one. That's what they teach you in the business schools. Push yourself. Get going. Be motivated. Get things done. Of course. But I can tell you, anyone who stays in the word of the Lord, anyone who focuses on the Lord, anyone who really prays more than five minutes a day, eh? you will find you got motivation second to none. Because you will see the God who is not just up there, he's here with you. And he lives in you. And he'll get you going. Amen. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.25 says, For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. He sends a boy, but of course, he's no ordinary boy. He took, a, he took a lowly, weak, you know, how many times that Jesus was in front of people and he, he just walked away. Other people say, stand and fight, man, you're a man. Stand and fight. Reason your way through it. He won't. Why waste your pearls on swine, he would say. They don't know. And when he died on the cross, about just about to die on the cross, he's praying for those people that hurt him. Forgive them, Lord, for they, they don't know what they're doing. What strength? What strength is that? That you can pray for your accusers, for those people that have put you down, those people that don't understand anything. So he took a low, lowly position now. As when he came as a babe, we celebrate Christmas. But when he returns the second time, everybody will see him. He will come in glory and might to judge the world. And as Revelations, you read the book, his eyes are flaming fire. He's the Lord God Almighty. God wants to rescue and save this hostile world, of course. Even those hostages, those who have been taken captive by the enemy, some of them don't know they are 
hostage and captured by the enemy. Others, of course, that have been captured don't want to be rescued, no matter what you say, because the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them. He said, what is that you're saying? I must believe in Jesus who died for my sin. Now, even the fact that somebody died, hmm, it's, to the world, it sounds like a loser. See, but yet, it is the giving away and the laying down of your life, God resurrects. Very different. And, and our life depends on the fact that Jesus died and Jesus arose. We will never arise had we, if we don't believe and trust him. Because that's the only way our sin is going to be eradicated through the cross. So the preaching of the cross, the people that look at, the, you know, we've been preaching the cross for a long time, right? 2,000 years ago, this thing has been going on. Not everybody is going to listen. Not everybody in your family is going to listen. Some of them are going to go to a Christless eternity. That's the saddest thing. You'll never see them again. Sad. Isn't it? Because they don't believe. They say, well, hey, hey, no wonder that. Give me something to do. Tell me what I must do. Yet God is again vulnerable and he, and he sends, us, sends us to go and preach. That's the important thing. Go and preach. And I hats off to those that do preach the gospel. Hats off to them. And yet even the church would criticize them and put them down because, yeah, because the enemy says, put them down, cut them off, mow them down. But hats off to them, wherever they are, wherever they are speaking, standing up for God, speaking for the, for the Lord. And you can hear the, the voice of the enemy, like, like the Goliath of old. You've come to finish me off. You and which army? He keeps taunting us with the gospel. And he says to us, the gospel is not working. Yet is the gospel that is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. This is a matter of life and death, eternal life and death. God, of course, is resolute and he wants this his way. And then let me share with you one last text. Our mission is, is very, very clear. It's from Isaiah 61, it says, verse 1, The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prison. All of these wonderful or weird things are happening to people. People are in bondage. People are in captivity. Uh, they are in darkness. Uh, they are broken hearted. There's, um, they are captured by the enemy. There's, they're in a prison of some kind. And yet, our, our mission, our mission as the church of Jesus is to go in the name of the Lord, just like God sending the little boy. As the Father sent me, so I send you, Jesus said. Go, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the year of vengeance and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Go and tell them and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty. How God desires to change hearts just by the preaching of the gospel, just by the church being in its place. This is the only way God has chosen. chosen. It's a weak way. It's weak. If I were God, I'd go to each house and clap all of them. Pull them out of the houses. Look here. Look here. Look. See. Can you see? What's that? Marks for you. Hmm? Get this right. You know, power God. But God's ways are not our ways. He just quietly sends a little boy. He says, you go and live for a few years. And then you will minister for a few years. And then I'll bring you back. But what you're going to do is going to be a permanent thing. You will be sitting on the throne of David forever. Now go and get my people back. Go. Go get yourself a bride. Go. 
bring your people back. We would nobody, not one of us, would ever be in heaven without that work. Without that work that he did. And do you know how many people will get to heaven because of your work? Hmm? And because you paid the price. Because somebody, because somebody cared, didn't care about the dangers we're sitting here today. Really. The fact that you come to the Lord, somebody paid a price somewhere to get the gospel to you. Somehow you got the gospel and you came to the Lord. Somebody was brave enough to withstand the trials and the tests, fight their way through it, overcome their stuff and rescue you by giving you the gospel. What a way. What a way God has chosen. And when you get home to be with the Lord, enjoying the bliss with the Lord, you would thank the Lord for the people that have been there for you. Yeah, we know in, in the church today, Somebody did care. I know some people that cared about me. I don't know. Uh, some of my friends, I remember, I did drugs with their parents, their families. Uh, you know, they were Christian. They were Christian. So the Christian children that I was doing drugs with, and some of the boys that I'd known, uh, I'd known then had become a Christian now. I mean, really serving the Lord. And they had godly mothers, godly mothers. I remember one time, one house, I was there Sunday morning doing drugs with my friend. And we were sitting in the lounge after a while. I didn't think, you know, church is starting a certain time, church finishes a certain time, people come and all. I don't know about any of that. My mind is not there. So this lady walks in from church. I mean, she walks in from church. She looked like Jesus walking in. Really. Really looked like Jesus walking in. Hello. Good, good morning. Loved us as she came in from church. She must be crying to God that morning too. Lord, I got some dogs there at home. Mm. Save them. Save them. And that boy that comes there is my good, seems like a good boy, but oh Lord, he's such a bad influence to my son. Yeah, oh, Lord, save that man. I don't know what his problem is, but save him. I'm sure people like that. If it were not for those people, I wouldn't be standing here. Hello? All because somebody, it's like your parents. If your parents killed you when you were born. <laughs> They decided, oh, yeah, yeah, I got this thing. Sell him. Put this child away. And many children died like that, right? By the way. Maybe when they're grown up now, you think I should have killed this one. Eh? Your parents took care of you, man. And they and then you grow up and you give them buck. They're the ones that took care of you. They could have put you away. <laughs> but they fed you. They died. Going to work, buying, bringing some stuff. They became vulnerable in that way to you. Hoping that you will turn out right. Praying that, you know, it will turn out right for you. It will work for you. Some have made shipwreck. But some have made, made a good, made it to shore, made it to safely to the harbor. We pray, and I, I believe that's the kind of evil exists in our world. And God is sending us vulnerable people, preachers, parents, and others into a world of leaders whether they be in government or in business or in justice systems, education, whatever they may be, God's will and power will be displayed. And you go there and speak in the name of the Lord. Stand up for God, whatever you may be. Today, that is what Christmas is all about. A little baby that came. I didn't stay a babe. 
we grew up. We don't all have to be in full-time service, by the way. Because God can send anybody at any time into the world to speak to it, to prophesy to it. You may feel vulnerable now. You may feel that you can't do this, you're weak. But then because of your own weakness and state, you become a candidate for God, for God to show his power through you. Every time you feel weak and you say, well, I can't do that, just say to yourself, well, God must display his, he must display his power now. I don't know. I'm going to go there anyway. I remember, you know, started to minister to people on the street or wherever I found them when I became a Christian initially. Or in the bus, I would give out tracks all the time in the trains. And that a certain day in the week, I would stand up in the train to preach. Didn't care. Ladies and gentlemen, and the train is moving and I'm like, I come to tell you about Jesus. Eh? It was so fun. It was so fun. I don't know how many people, but I heard some people came to the Lord because of that. I remember one guy he took the track. I gave him literature, Christian literature. He took it, threw it on his wardrobe. And then um, after a few years, uh, he was painting his house and there's no ladder, so he went on the wardrobe. Found the track, put the paintbrush down, read it, and gave his heart to the Lord. And I heard it. It came to my mind. It came to my ears. That story. Stories like that. A few stories like that. Amazing that God is able to use a simple, simple thing like a track. Your life. Just standing there being brave and giving it out. Some people will take and throw it. We used to give out thousands here at the, at the Khan's hospital. People throw, some people throw it. Most people take it home. Other people, like I say, would read it. And God would use it. All God wants is for us to be there. If Jesus did not come, we would not have been saved. God became very vulnerable when he sent his son, a babe. And he can send you. Amen? Stand with me. Let's pray. When Jesus returns, he's not going to be like a little babe anymore, by the way. He'll come back in might and power. The whole world will see him. Don't bother about what people are saying now. Jesus is here, this is there, or kingdom is here, kingdom there. And, uh, and give you the dates. People, people say, this is the date he's coming. Nobody knows the day. There are isms and there are people that believe that. And every time that date comes, the date goes, they change the goalpost. Because they lie. They don't know. Jesus said, my father is the only one who knows the day. But in the meantime, our job is to continue preaching the gospel. As simply as we can and to get as many people as we can to come to the Lord in a very simple way. It's not something very, you know, for you to do some amazing feats so you can be welcome. All you need to say is to say yes, Lord, to him. And you can do that today. Have you come to the Lord? Really? Have you come? Have you uh, bowed before the Lord? See, it's one thing to come to the church and it's something else to really bow before the Lord. I'm not talking about physically bow. I'm talking about spiritually committing yourself to the Lord. Are you ready for his coming? What if he were to come today? Would you be ready to be with him forever? And those who have come are passed from death to life immediately. The moment you come, death is gone. Life has come. And you'll be saved. And some of you, we're, God is calling for you to go and to, to talk to your family, talk to people. Are you feeling vulnerable? Are you feeling weak in ministry? Then you're a candidate for God to manifest his power. And you might think, well, what is God? Anointing is not when you raise your voice and speak with a funny accent. You know, hallelujah, glory. You know, it, I'm telling you. That's not where anointing is. I can do that without. 
A lot of artists in the world, they talk like that, don't they? That's not anointing. Anointing is something that's very, very different. When you're speaking under God and God's spirit, God can work in very different ways. So you don't need to turn your, train your voice. You don't have to put an accent on your voice. You don't have to raise it. God is able to take you, your simple life, your simple talk, and can make it very, very powerful. Amen. So can I pray for you? And as I pray, say to the Lord, Jesus, today I, I'm here, I come. This Christmas uh, 2021, I'm glad I find myself in the presence of the Lord. Pray your blessings on my life.